Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Hudson. I'm the pastor here at Pilgrim Church, United Church of Christ. I welcome you to this hour of grief and gratitude of storytelling and memory. I welcome you on behalf of Peter and the boys and Evelyn. I welcome you and ask you to enter in to our community this day uh, and witness to a beautiful and a loving and a wonderful life. You know, we didn't, before COVID, we didn't do those like memorial slides of people's lives. And now it's funny, I, in some ways I can't imagine a funeral without it because what it really does is it reminds us of the arc of a person's life. Um, and sometimes if we don't remember that at a memorial service, what we remember the most is like the last part of the person's life. And if they struggled with sickness or something, that might be the most powerful memory. But I have to say, just seeing the pictures of Evelyn as I looked up there, it's a reminder of strength and vitality and love and being fully engaged with the world and God's creation and uh, what a beautiful person she was. And so that's what God calls us uh, to be this day and to, and to do and to witness. And so it's in that spirit that I welcome you here today. <clears throat> in recognition that we're not alone, that God calls us to be in community, I would invite you to your comfort level to turn to your left or right or back or front and to just greet each other with a sign of God's peace. Uh, one other note, I'm not sure, did Evelyn like to sing? No, okay. Well, that's too bad. As Peter likes to sing. Peter's been in the choir for 95 years, Peter, for a long time. And that's one of the ways that we kind of grieve and, and are, are thankful, we sing. So you're, um, you're uh, strongly advised to join in our singing community this day. But everyone, please open your bulletin uh, to the first page uh, and uh, follow with me and join with me in a call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us all pray together in unison. Holy God, in this hour of grief and remembrance, let your Holy Spirit intercede for us with sighs too deep for words, be with us as we gather to remember and celebrate the precious life of Evelyn. Heal our grieving hearts made heavy by this loss. Listen to the stories about our mother, hiker, explorer, gardener, friend, and neighbor. Accept our prayers of thanksgiving for all she was Embrace us through our tears, silence, and reflection. Assure us of your continuing presence. Remind us of the place you have prepared for all your children in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Our opening hymn is number 66 in the red hymnal, which you can find right in front of you in the pews, For the Beauty of the Earth.
Please be seated. I have two passages of Scripture to share with you this day. The first is from the Hebrew Scriptures from Isaiah chapter 2, the mountain of the Lord. This is what Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and this mountain, and this God will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples, and they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob. Let us walk up the mountain. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Second reading comes from the Gospel of John, and it's a familiar um, talk that Jesus gives to his disciples, the men and the women who followed him for three years. It's the night before his death, and he wants to reassure them that they are not without comfort. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come to you. And so peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Let all God's people say, Amen. We're blessed today to have several uh, people, live and on video, uh, speak about their relationship with Evelyn and what Evelyn meant to their life and to their world. And so I would first like to invite up to the pulpit Fran Garfield, who is a longtime neighbor and friend. Fran? Evelyn and Peter Lifferton were our friends for close to 45 years and next-door neighbors for more than 25 of those years. Since we are all here to celebrate Evelyn's life, you can imagine what great neighbors they were. Um, as neighbors, we had a first-hand look at Evelyn's garden. Evelyn was a caring, thoughtful, competent, no-fuss person. Her garden reflected those traits. It was big, beautiful, organized, and above all, productive. Evelyn shared its bounty with us all through the growing season, but we especially appreciated it every year in late August when Evelyn and Peter took Ken and Mark on a trip before school started and we had picking privileges. <laughs> After we moved out of Sherburne, I used to meet Evelyn at the Natick Audubon to walk and catch up. I'm a very slow walker, but during those walks, she never let me know by word, expression, or action how much I was holding her up. Even though as someone who had hiked a good part of the Appalachian Trail and took a five-mile walk one week after major surgery, she had to have wanted to walk much, much faster. Evelyn was an especially valued member of our book group. In the words of our members, Evelyn's contribution to the group discussions were, quote, organized, detailed, and accurate, and delivered with her wry sense of humor, unquote. We have a box with suggested topics for each meeting. It was very natural that Evelyn took responsibility for the box. After the pandemic made it necessary to switch to Zoom, she was our tech guru. She not only took over management of Zoom 
and set up a recurrent meeting, but put together a Zoom 101 memo for our less than tech savvy group. <laughs> when our book group's topic was Southeast Asia, Evelyn arranged for Ken to be our guest speaker. He was interesting and entertaining, and we all remarked afterwards how proud she must have been. During his talk, Ken told us that in Vietnam we would all be known as his aunties, and Evelyn could see how happy and proud each of us was with our new light title. It was typical of Evelyn that on July 9th, while she was dealing with the effects of the last infusion from the clinical trial in which she was participating, she sent out an email to the book group to remind us of the dates and topics of the next four meetings. That was typical of Evelyn. Her passing left a big hole. We miss her very much. Thank you, Fran. Next, uh, a longtime friend and hiking and gardening buddy, Delicia Salsich. Good afternoon. I'll work through this as I can. Please bear with me. About 40 years ago, my husband and I were looking to purchase a home in Massachusetts. We drove up in front of a house on Dopping Brook Road to view a house, and we were waiting for the seller. When coming down the driveway was a man running. He stuck his head in the driver's window and said, you got to buy this house. Your car is just like ours. <laughs> Do you know that man? <laughs> Peter Lifferton. Yes. And in spite of that crazy introduction to the neighborhood, we hadn't met Fran by then, uh, we did purchase the house, and we later met the rational, calm wife to this man, <laughs> Evelyn Lifferton, and the sons, Ken and Mark. Over the next 40 years, my friendship with Evelyn grew with our sharing the love of gardening. She was always better than I was. And house plants, hers always looked better than mine and going to their home for meals. We took hikes in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, and we traveled many countries on four continents together. After being neighbors with Evelyn for about nine years, my ma family moved to Virginia. Now, I thought that was the end of our friendship, but not Evelyn. Evelyn had other ideas, and thank goodness she did. Our friendship continued long distance. It continued for two more moves. It continued when I married my husband, Ham, and she officiated at our wedding, and we moved to Connecticut. When I was living in Virginia, the Lifetons came for Thanksgiving, and I was lamenting. I had gone to China with my son, Aaron, but we had not gone up the Yangtze River, and I was lamenting this. Well, Evelyn and I made eye contact, and she said, hmm, do you think we could go to China and we could go up the Yangtze? Take about three weeks. And it might be the end of our friendship or the beginning of our friendship, Delicia. <laughs> well, Evelyn was right, as usual. We did go up the Yangtze. We did spend about three weeks. And our friendship was even stronger than before. And we did all that traveling to those many countries and four continents after that. There were at least four other ways I benefited from my friendship with Evelyn, and Fran alluded to these. Uh, Evelyn had the rare quality of knowing how to listen. Evelyn knew how to listen and not give advice unless asked for. Evelyn could talk and share without dominating the conversation, and Evelyn had great compassion for others. Evelyn had uh, many health issues, but she kept moving, as Fran alluded to, and she did not complain, so that she could live a full and active life with family and friends, hiking, gardening, 
and travel. How does one have such a perfect friendship with someone who's this perfect? <laughs> you may ask. Well, thank goodness she wasn't perfect, pretty close to it, and I could tell some funny stories about that, but we don't have time. I, cu I cut them all out. I didn't, Peter said five minutes was the max, so. Ah, uh, Evelyn, Evelyn and I will no longer share our joys and sorrows and our concerns. We won't hike and travel together. We won't exchange plants. We won't have a Thanksgiving celebration the Friday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Excuse me. I will no longer receive a birthday card every year or an anniversary card of Hammond's my wedding where she officiated. But still, but still, but still, she is with me on the trails when I hike in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. She is still with me when I water my streptocarpus plants that she gave me. She is still with me each spring when the trillium giant Solomon seal bloom in my garden that she gave me. She is with me when I see her pictures that were taken on our hikes together that are on my desk. Evelyn even appears unexpectedly sometimes, like when I get out my electric fry pan that she gave me, or when I make her broccoli salad. My friend is with me. My friend is still with me. Thank you. So some folks could not make it today, including Evelyn's brother, Joe Hammond, but he sent a message. And Jack Mulhall, who's a friend of the Lifferton family, will share that with us now. We've been longtime friends of the Lifferton family and uh, I too have many long stories and wonderful memories of hiking with Evelyn that I'm going to spare you from today. Uh, but Peter uh, has asked me today to speak uh, for Evelyn's brother, Joe, and he has uh, given me these notes to read to you uh, for this service. And I'm going to uh, ask you to listen carefully. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to honor the memory of my sister, Betsy. I am Joseph Hammond, Jr. Our parents had no imagination in naming us. Both my sister and I are juniors. My sister, our mother, and dad's sister are all Evelyn Elizabeth, hence the nickname Betsy. I've not met most of you. I come from a completely different part of her life. We grew up on a large open property with hundreds of undeveloped acres around us. As a result, we spent lots of time exploring our surroundings. We were typically typical siblings teasing and playing together in our early years. Our mom taught us how to garden and take care of our yard. We helped harvest, can, and freeze what we grew. Betsy loved being outside and her garden. When, we, when she was in Girl Scouts, she earned the equivalent of Eagle Scout and went to Colorado for the National Girl Scout Jamboree. In high school, she was in the band and a cheerleader and was captain for two years. She was valedictorian of her class. She went to college for two years at Keystone Junior College, majoring in engineering. And she had the highest grade point average in the school. She went on to Penn State for computers and a minor in Russian. After graduation, she moved to Massachusetts. Our cousin was there and helped her get settled. 
My sister also hiked to the bottom of the Grand Canyon twice, which I thought was amazing, especially as she was in her 70s. The rest of her life was in Massachusetts, and I was not part of it, but she did come to us to, for a visit on a regular basis. Betsy was the last of my immediate family, and I will miss her. Thank you again for coming. And it's signed by Betsy's brother, Chip. We're blessed today to use kind of our technology to bring some people to us as well. And so I'm told that there's a video message and a song from Lenore and John Walsh, childhood and longtime friends from Pennsylvania. Evelyn's parents lived in the nearby Scranton prior to moving up to the country and uh, eventually starting a summer swim club there. While I grew up on a dairy and vegetable farm, Evelyn's family attended the Methodist church in town while I attended the Catholic church that my parents belonged to. I did get to know her parents and her brother Joe quite well over the years. Evelyn was a student to be admired. I can still visualize her neatly displayed Algebra 2 problems, that was a work of mathematical art. I wish you could have seen it. She gave us all something to aspire to. Of course, she was our valedictorian, and she went on to claim that title again in two years at our community college. After that, she was on her way to study at Penn State main campus. After college, we, when we were both working and could afford to do a little traveling together, Evelyn was now living in Massachusetts and I was still living in Pennsylvania. There was a ski trip to New Hampshire, a Canadian trip to New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, and then there was the big one, a very memorable cross-country trip, and that was the best. We drove cross country to experience our big, beautiful country. And boy, is it big and beautiful. And of course, you probably well know that Evelyn did, became, did become a world traveler. As some time went by, we were in each other's wedding parties. Evelyn remained in Massachusetts and my husband John and I moved uh, to Florida after living in Philadelphia for two years. Evelyn came to visit us in both places. I'm not sure, but I think that she might have wanted to see how married life was go working out for us. After that, we, did, we didn't see each other as, as often, but kept in touch and got to know each other's new families over the years, including her husband, Peter, and her, their sons, Ken and Mark, especially when they were youngsters. I will always be grateful for Evelyn's friendship and for all of the 66 years of experiences we shared. Evelyn knew how to be a good friend, and I will miss her dearly, as well as her family and her many friends. A time for every purpose under heaven. To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose under heaven. 
A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to hurt, a time to heal, a time to love, a time to weep. To everything turn, turn, turn. Is a season turn, 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 and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to love, a time to hate. A time of peace, I swear it's not too late. To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose under heaven. And a time for every purpose under heaven. Evelyn and Peter's two boys. First, I'd like to invite Mark to come forward and share some thoughts with us. Hello, everybody. So I like to think of a person's legacy in terms of the people whose lives they've touched along the way. And every time your path crosses with someone else's, whether it's big or small, whether it's long or fleeting, you have some impact on them, and you leave a mark on their trajectory from there forward. Their life is changed by you and yours by them irreversibly, and a mark is left that is indelible even if it is small. So that is how I like to think of my mother now, as part of every one of us here, having touched our lives in so many ways, whether big or small. And I don't just mean in our memories, though of course we have those and that is part of it too. We remember her as a good person, as strong in so many ways, as keenly intelligent, calm, and kind. But even things we don't consciously remember have an effect on us. And so the sum of those effects is part of each of us. If you knew my mother more through my father or my brother or myself, well, she's a huge part of who we are and what we do. And so she reached you that way, too. She's here in all of us. We all carry her with us in some way. The day after my mom passed, I went for a walk in the woods behind the house. I went walking in the woods to be with her, experiencing and appreciating nature, being outdoors, and hiking up and down and around anything she could was a huge part of her life. And for my whole life, she shared that with me too. I wasn't always the happiest child, and she, she knew that, that being outside and getting to the top of a mountain would just make me shine. It really would. And so throughout my life, she would always be organizing and taking me on hikes. Not just for me, of course, but also for me. So thanks to her, I love a good mountain, a good trail, a good forest or wildflower or stream. And any time I'm there, out there, whether physically there or in my thoughts, I'm with her. And you can be too. Even if it's just noticing a great mountain in the distance, she can be there with you. She passed along her love of plants as well. Many of you have seen her house plants, her flower beds, her vegetable garden. 
She loved plants, and she was so knowledgeable and talented with them. Growing up, that meant a house just full of green, beautiful displays of flowers throughout the warmer months, and, and fresh fruit and vegetables. Eating fresh vegetables, often plucked straight from the garden just moments before, that was a defining feature of growing up for me. We all helped out some, but she did the vast majority of the work, and that was such an amazing gift that she just continuously gave us. And so now, any time I'm digging in my own garden or repotting a plant in my basement, I'm with her. And, and you can be too. Even if it's just admiring someone else's garden, she can be with you then. One more thing that comes to mind, and this is a little random, but it's her pies. My mom made incredibly good pies. Lots of you have tried them. Um, apple, rhubarb, and French silk were my favorites. She'd make one for me for my birthday every year or whenever I was home following my birthday. But the problem is that they've actually ruined pie for me. <laughs> honestly, like honestly, most pies I have are just not good compared to my mom's pies. So I'll keep her recipes and anytime I'm making one, of course, of course I'll be with her. And again, you can be too. Anytime any of us are having a not as good pie out there in the world, we can think of my mom's pies and she can be with us then. Above all else for me, of course she was my mom. She and my dad raised me and cared for me and loved me and just gave me a really wonderful life. I learned so much from her. She showed me so much and she gave me so much. Even when I was doing something ill-advised, which was often, she loved and supported me. She just, just always supported me. I was truly, truly so lucky to have her as my mom and to have all of the time with her that I did. So thank you all for being here, and thank you for carrying a bit of my mom with you, all of you. Ken? Finally, Ken Lifferton, please. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. Um, it, it's, it's great to see, uh, to see, of course, family, friends, neighbors, members of the Pilgrim Church family, uh, my aunties from the book group. Uh, <laughs> I, that, thank you, thank you, Fran Garfield, for, for reminding uh, us about that that story about about my aunts, many aunts, um, uh, and you know, for reminding for reminding us of of what a great influence mom has been on our lives and and how we grew up. Um, of course, the garden, uh, the walks in the Audubon sanctuary. Um, like Delicia mentioned, travel to four continents, uh, you know, um, and and you know, Uncle Joe talking about the harvest, um, uh, the cross country trip in 1968 that uh, that Lenore uh, talked about. They actually, yeah, that was 1968. They actually drove all the way across the country um, and took uh, you know all these great photos that we still have uh, today um, from that. And so the the collection of those experiences. Uh, became kind of contributed to you know my my how mom raised me my childhood right so the um, the amazing garden uh, you know the you know harvesting harvesting vegetables uh, a love of reading uh, that mom inculcated in us um, mom's background as a, really a pioneer uh, in computer programming um, in the 1960s when that's not not really something that women were doing. Um, later, as a kid, one of my first jobs was actually testing software uh, at the office. So that was, that was a great experience. Um, so many ways that mom contributed to, to our upbringing. Um, our world travels, getting to know and understand the world uh, better. Um, and of course, climbing most of the 4,000 foot mountains in New Hampshire uh, and getting that great love of, of nature. Um, so, 
yeah, Mark and I were blessed uh, by, you know, you know, being raised by, by mom and dad. Um, but I think, uh, actually, Delicia alluded to, to something that I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, from, from kind of how mom did things, which was to keep moving. Um, like, whatever obstacles, she just kept on going. Um, the world travels, hiking the Grand Canyon twice in her 70s, continuing to hike during cancer. So after, the, her, after her periodic chemotherapy sessions, uh, a week or two later, we would go, we would go hiking. Um, she couldn't actually always drive there, so I'd help with that, but we could go, go hike in the woods in between chemotherapy. Um, earlier, you saw a collection, well, this, I'll get to this, but we saw a collection of slides uh, from the 1960s uh, up, up, through, up through the 90s. Those were all slides that uh, mom scanned while she was doing chemotherapy. Um, so she and I worked together uh, to, to basically collect those memories of several thousand uh, slides from our, from our, from our travels, uh, from our memories in the neighborhood, uh, from the many things we had done together in our lives. And they were all these boxes of meticulously cataloged slides that we then put into the computer, and now we have uh, for, for forever. Um, and of course, uh, the amazing garden, and just taking it for granted that, um, uh, you know, we have vegetables and, and so forth. And m mom continued to do that, uh, even, once again, even during chemotherapy, and even this year, uh, we were out in the garden uh, with mom directing us uh, to, get, uh, to get this summer's crop done. Um, so we're, we're amazingly blessed. The photo is from Norcross Pond, uh, which is a pond up at about 3,000 feet in the Pemigewasset Wilderness. Uh, it's about a couple hours from the nearest road um, it's not the easiest hike. It's not climbing a whole mountain, but it's, it's a good part of that. And so this was one of mom's favorite places. Uh, we've, we've hiked there as a family in the past. I know she's hiked there with friends. Um, and so uh, this photo I, I took in August, um, and we were able to you know, take another hike together uh, through photos uh, when, when mom could no longer hike. So um, we, that was great that we, we could do that. And um, in mom's memory, we'll be back uh, for a last family hike um, to Norcross Pond this springtime uh, to the outlet, which leads out into the vast wilderness uh, from that beautiful pond. Um, we'll be there uh, to, to appreciate nature as mom would. And I'm sure uh, she will be there with us. So um, thank you for being here today. To the family and the friends, the community of Evelyn Hammond Lifferton, Evelyn. We gather here on this late December afternoon, aware that someone who should be here with us, who was here with us, this day she is gone. And that is hard. We gather, called together by God, therefore, to be with each other in this time of loss and sadness, and especially especially to be here in support and love for you, Peter, and for you, Ken, and for you, Mark. You, most, you more so than most of us here, you knew Evelyn. You were known by and blessed by Evelyn and by her love, by her constancy, by her faithfulness, by her one life. And thus, this day, my friends, our job as people of faith and as a community of Evelyn, it is our call to witness to her one life 
and to be a gathering of strength and hope through this time of grief and loss and a gathering of thanksgiving and gratitude for one beautiful and graceful God-given life, that life of Evelyn. This is often the part of the eulogy where I say whether or not I knew the person that we mourn, that either I knew them well or I did not. And I have to say in the case of Evelyn, I knew her, but I knew her in her own way, in Evelyn's quiet and sometimes circumspect ways. I was blessed to have her along on a work and service trip to New Orleans years ago, and on that journey, she worked hard and she made our group stronger. Sometimes Peter would call me from their car with some type of request or opinion or idea or just a general proclamation. (laughs) And I knew Evelyn was in the car too, right next to him. And so I always tried at the end of the talk to check in with her. But mostly I knew Evelyn through you, Peter, through you, her husband of almost 50 years, and her partner, and her hiking mate, and her caregiver, especially at the end of her life. Peter, you were her love, and so were you, Ken and Mark. For the boys, Peter said, your mom gave you the gift of life and being exposed to all of life and its varied ways and cultures and peoples. And she taught you to live with respect and curiosity as you move through this life and this world. And you, Peter, in your own words, you told me that Evelyn calmed your passions and temperaments. In a way, she was the yin to your yang, the quietude to your talking, the reflecting to your acting, the slow down to your speed up. Oh, that all of us would find such a life partner to share the gift of life with, and and you did, Peter, you did. Evelyn was, in a real way, a child of God's creation, as we've heard, lover of all things natural, earthly, whether it was her working the garden or trying to tease life out of the rocky and stubborn New England soil, or whether it was hiking the mountains and peaks of northern New England, especially New Hampshire. Now, I was told that Evelyn hiked and summited all 48 New Hampshire 4,000-foot and above mountains. From the peak of Washington, some 6,288 feet, to the diminutive to Cabot and Cannon, and Jackson, too. Hiking was Evelyn's happy place, striding up the mountain, figuring out the route, taxing to the max her physical strength and endurance. Mountains are both lovely and mysterious. They are just there, of course. But they also have some kind of mystical power, daring humans, inviting the rare few among us to explore their peaks and valleys and enjoy their spectacular views and endure their fickle weather. Evelyn climbed the physical mountains of her life, and at the end of her life, she faced the greatest challenge, and she bravely pushed back against it. But then finally, one day, she succumbed to it, all too soon and all too fast, but lovingly comforted on that final journey from earth to heaven, from the trailhead to the peak, from life to death and life beyond death, by the three men in her life. The famed American naturalist John Muir once said, the mountains are calling and I must go. Friends and family, on this day we mark Evelyn's journey to the eternal mountain of God. It has called and she has now gone up to that summit. Good hike, Evelyn, great hike. I imagine the one who is forever at the top of that mountain saying to her, you made it, Evelyn, good job. May God bless her, may God bless us in our grief, in our gratitude, and in this godly community. Let all God's people say, amen. Friends, let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray.
Friends, in this protective shelter of God's healing love, in this place we are free to pour out our grief, to tell our stories, to share our memories, to admit and confess to our loss and to to believe and to know in all these ways that God cares and God is here. We gather as, gather as God's people conscious of others who have died and of the frailty of our own existence on the earth. We always come to support and to love one another in our common loss, to hear a word of hope that can drive away our despair and even move us to offer God our praise. And we gather to commend with deep thanksgiving, deep thanksgiving, the life of Evelyn, as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection. And so God, whose ways are not our ways and whose thoughts are not our thoughts, grant this day that your Holy Spirit may intercede for us with sighs too deep for human words. And in the quiet places of our hearts, we offer you this day the, the silent prayers of our hearts. All of these things and so much more we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our friend, our savior, our guide, the one whose birth we await, who asks us all to pray together as a sign of our unity in him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, some prayers are kind of written on our hearts and in our bones. Um, and one of those prayers is the 23rd Psalm. And, and one of the beautiful things about it is it speaks about meeting Christ in the natural world, in green pastures and beside still waters like that pond. And so this day I'd invite all of us to join together in one voice um, to speak the words of comfort and truth from the 23rd Psalm that are printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, In the Bulb There Is a Flower, can be found on the insert in your bulletin.
Please be seated. And so now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Evelyn. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a daughter of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of the saints in light. Amen. Friends, after the benediction, um, I will escort the Lifton family downstairs to the reception, and after they are out of the sanctuary, the deacons will excuse you, and you're all invited to come downstairs and share in a reception, have some food, tell some stories, and be in fellowship with each other. And so, friends, a final benediction. Merciful God, support us all the day long of this life full of trouble, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your tender mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace, peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, let all God's people say, Amen.